Hello everyone, Mike here from WaxDAO.io. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the WaxDAO token creator, which like it says on the screen, allows you to create your own Wax token using no code whatsoever. I've gone ahead and set up a testnet version of this on the website for those of you who want to test this out before you make any mistakes on mainnet. So in the video, I'm going to be using the testnet to demonstrate, but the process works the same on testnet or mainnet. The first thing you're going to need to do if you're using the testnet is get yourself a testnet wax account, which you can do at this link right here, faucet.waxsweden.org slash create account, question mark, and then you put your account name here. I'll put a link to this in the description so that you guys don't have to stare at the screen and write it out manually. I'm just going to put WaxDAO tokens, and you can see I got a succeeded message. It gives me a public and a private key pair here. I don't really care if you guys see them because this is just a testnet account that I'm not going to use, but obviously keep this stuff safe on mainnet. I'm going to go ahead and import the active key into my Anchor wallet, which I'm going to do off screen. Okay, I went ahead and imported that account into Anchor wallet. So now I just need to do one more thing before I can get started, and that's to get some WAX tokens on the testnet. And you can do that at the same website. It's just a different link. So I'm going to do that right now. It's faucet.waxsweden.org slash get token question mark. And then you put your account name there. So I'm going to put WaxDAO tokens at the end. I've reached the max amount of tokens for 24 hours. All right, now I turned on my VPN and I got me some tokens. So All right, so now if I take a look at my account on Blocks, the testnet version of Blocks, you can see that I've got 500 Wax in my testnet account. And now if I go back to test.waxdow.io, I can get started with the process here. The first thing that you need to do is get whitelisted. If you're on the testnet, you can just use the wax tokens. That's the reason that you just got them. If you're on mainnet, you can also burn a Wojak NFT and you, you actually get like 56% off by doing that. But I'm just going to pay the 250 wax here. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's a get whitelisted right now button. Pay 250 wax. You must be logged in with Anchor Wallet. So just got to log in real quick. Now I'm logged in with my WaxDAO tokens account and I can click pay 250 wax. It's going to ask me to sign a transaction to transfer 250 wax to the contract. And you can see that I am now whitelisted. So the next step before you can actually create any tokens is to deploy the token contract to your account. That's what you just got whitelisted for for deploying the actual contract. So now if I click deploy contract, you're gonna see that I'll get some errors, but I'll walk you through them. I want you guys to see the errors so that you can understand what needs to be done. So if I click deploy contract, so first it's checking if I'm whitelisted. Uh, it says I'm not, so I might need to just refresh real quick. All right, I got that sorted out. It's just because I'm on the testnet version of the site. Um, it was just an API error, but I got that fixed. You guys should not have that problem when you try this. Uh, so now if I just click deploy contract, it's going to check for existing contracts on my account. It's going to check my resources and it says I need to stake about two milliseconds worth of CPU to deploy the contract. It'll ask me if I want to try anyway. I'm going to say no because I know I don't have enough resources. So the first thing that I want to do is just go back to the test net and stake some CPU. So if I go to my wallet here, I have to log in with Anchor and I log in. I can stake some CPU. Um, I don't know how much it takes to get two milliseconds, but I'll stake about 50 wax worth and see how that works. So on the test net, it looks like that got me about 5.52 seconds. I don't know if it's gonna be the same on the main net, but now if I try again, it'll say that I need 500,000 bytes of RAM to deploy the contract. So it's gonna tell you everything you need to know about resources here. If you don't have enough, it's gonna let you know. So I'm gonna go back and buy the RAM that I need. I need 500,000 bytes of RAM which is about 96 wax on testnet. It's definitely going to be more than that on mainnet. I think it's about 400 wax or so on mainnet. It fluctuates. Um, so I'm going to buy this now. So now I have my CPU and my RAM. There's one more thing I'm going to need, which is net, but it should let me know that right now. You need to stake about 50 wax worth of net to deploy the contract. So now I just need to stake some net. I'll stake 50 wax worth and see if that covers it. So I've got that, and now let's see what happens if I click Deploy Contract. Now it's going to ask me to sign. Now I'm going to be able to do this because I have dangerous transactions enabled in the Anchor Wallet. 
Uh, if you haven't enabled that setting in Anchor Wallet, you're going to need to do that. You might get an error that says, you're not allowed to do this transaction because it's dangerous. That's just something that Anchor Wallet does by default to protect you. You don't want to be accidentally deploying a contract to your account because somebody might try and take over your account or something like that. You want to make sure you know what you're doing when you just do a transaction like this. So uh, you'll need to enable that setting in Anchor Wallet. Once you have it enabled, you can execute this transaction. Now for me, that went right through. Something that you should keep in mind when you do this on mainnet, especially if you're using a hardware wallet, which you probably should be, is that it might take like a solid one to two minutes for this transaction to load. Um, that's because Anchor has to process the entire contract. It's a large contract. Uh, that data sometimes just takes a minute for it to load. So if you click deploy contract and then it, it goes to open the transaction and nothing happens for like one minute, don't worry, just give it a little bit of time. But if more than like two minutes goes by, then you should probably start to figure that you did something wrong. Um, all right, so anyway, it says your contract has been deployed. Check the blockchain to make sure it confirmed. And if I go back to the blockchain and go to my account, you can see that set code and set ABI are the last two transactions here. That means that I set the contract code on my account. You don't need to know all the technical stuff behind this, but basically that just means that you actually got it done. It worked. So now that I have the actual contract deployed, I can go back to WaxDAO. It'll say, do you already have your token contract deployed? If so, then you can use this manage token second section right here. And it's going to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to create a new token? Do you want to issue an existing token, transfer or burn tokens? The first thing we're obviously going to need to do is create a token because we haven't created one yet. So let's click create. We can set the max supply here. So let's say I want to set it to 100 million. I would put 100, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. That's 100 million. The symbol is going to be, I don't know, test. And we'll leave the precision at eight. But you can set this to whatever you want. I highly recommend eight decimals just because um, it's pretty standard on WAX. And especially if you're going to use like a WAX style reward pool, like a, a token staking pool or a farm or anything like that. You want your token to be divisible by at least eight because uh, it's going to be hard for you to split up rewards and you're going to run into problems. So I'm going to leave it at eight and click submit transaction. It's going to ask me to sign it and you can see the maximum supply is 100 million with eight decimals of test token. Submitting the transaction now and my token has been created so now the next thing we need to do is actually issue some of these tokens to somebody. So if I click issue and set the amount that I want to issue, let's just say I want to issue 100 tokens and the symbol is test. I'm going to issue 100 test. It doesn't ask you what account you want to issue them to and that's because you have to issue to your own account. Once you issue to yourself, then you can do other stuff after. You can transfer to people, but you're going to issue them to your own account. So. It's checking the contract to make sure the token exists. It does. Now it's going to ask me to sign a transaction to issue 100 test tokens to my account. All right, my tokens have been issued, and now if I want to transfer them, I can click transfer. Um, but I'm not going to see anything here in this list. Uh, it's because I just need to refresh my balances. So I'll just refresh the page. And then now if I click transfer, you can see that I have 100 tests in my account. So I'll click test. Let's say I want to transfer, I don't know, 10.5 to Mike D Crypto 5. And click transfer. Ten point five test. Tokens have been sent. And then lastly, if I want to burn some tokens, I can click burn and then choose test. And let's say I want to burn, I don't know, five tokens. I'll just enter five and then click burn five test. It's going to ask me to sign it. And your tokens have been burned and removed from the supply. So let's close that. Let's go back to blocks. And just verify that all this stuff actually went through. 
So the last transaction here is a burn for five test. But how do we know that they actually got burned? Let's take a look at the contract here. And if we go to the stat table, and under where it says scope right here, we have to type the name of the token, which is test. And if we refresh it, you can see that the max supply is no longer 100 million. It's now 999, 999, 95. So five tokens were burned and removed from the, from the max supply here. Um, the current issued supply is 95. That's because we issued 100 and we burned five of them. And we can see I transferred 10.5 tests to Mike Decrypto 5 that went through. So if we go to Mike Decrypto 5's account, we can see he got some test tokens. So this stuff is all working. Um, and I also have some FAQ questions, some FAQs for you guys here at the bottom of the screen. So if you're confused about anything, it tells you how to get whitelisted. Um, you can choose to pay 250 wax, 25,000 Wojak tokens, which you can get on Alcor. So at the time of this video, uh, that's 136 wax for 25,000 Wojak tokens. So you're already saving like 114 wax if you choose that option. Um, or you can burn a Wojak NFT, which it'll take you to the drop page if you click on that. And those are 109 wax. So um, the standard price is 250 wax, or you can choose one of these other options, which will most likely save you money, depending on what time you see this video. Uh, it's also going to tell you how much RAM, CPU, and net you need in case you're confused about that. Do you need to pay for each token you create? No. Um, the answer is no. You only need to pay once to get your account whitelisted. Once your account is whitelisted, you can deploy the token contract. And then once you have the contract deployed, you can create as many tokens on that account as you want. So let's say I want to create another token right now. I already created the test token. So let's say I want to create, I don't know, test two. I'm pretty sure that's a valid name. It has to be seven characters or less, and I believe it can only be uh, A through Z and maybe one through five. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, let's say I want to make the max supply 100 point, I don't know, 100 tokens with a precision of eight. I was gonna say, it says unable to sign transaction, so I'm going to assume that the token name is not valid. So let's try, um, I don't know, let's call it shit. And all right, so that works. So you can't put numbers in the token name, apparently, at least not the number two. Um, so if I want to create another token now, I just sign this transaction. And then now if I go back to blocks and if I look at the contract, go back to the stat table and this time instead of test, I'll type shit in the scope. And you can see that there's a new token here, max supply, 100 shit. And the issued supply is currently zero because I haven't issued any. Um, what else do you want to know? Anchor won't let me deploy the contract. So I already covered this. You need to enable the allow dangerous transaction setting in Anchor Wallet. Just go into Anchor Wallet, click settings, and then allow dangerous transactions. Uh, can you use the Wax Cloud Wallet? The answer to that is no. You don't actually own your private keys for the Wax Cloud Wallet. Uh, the Wax team owns them. It's a custodial wallet. It's it's like keeping your money on an exchange. It's easy, but uh, it's not safe at all. So not only would you not want to um, keep your contract on there, but you actually can't because they won't let you. The Wax Cloud Wallet does not let you deploy contracts to it. You don't have permission because you don't own the wallet. So Anchor is the only way with this. Um, and lastly, why isn't the transaction working? Usually it's because you don't have enough RAM, CPU, or net. Uh, you might not have the contract deployed to your account. And the, the way that you can check that, even though the front end will tell you that anyway on Waxtel, but if you want to check manually, if you just go to your account on Blocks, you see how I have a contract tab right next to account here? And it says um, tables, account, stat, actions, burn, close, create, issue, etc. If you don't have a contract on your account, you won't see this contract tab at all. All you'll see is just account. So if I go to Mike D Crypto 5, you can see no contract, just account. So if you want to check if your transaction went through, just look at your account on blocks and see if you actually have a contract on it. This will not work on a mobile device, most likely. In my experience, it has never worked for anybody who's tried to do this on mobile. Uh, for some reason, Anchor Wallet on mobile just cannot handle the contract, I guess, or whatever it might be. 
it's not going to work. So if you're having issues, do this on a PC. It's not going to work on mobile. Any other issues might be that you're not whitelisted, which I'm sure you'll know if that's the case because it'll tell you. Um, or, or you don't like to follow directions and you ignored the whole tutorial, which has been my experience many times. People don't listen. So um, I highly suggest watching this tutorial again if you're still confused. And if you need any other help, just uh, join the Telegram channel. You can click it right here. It's also in the footer on the website. And that should cover everything. If you have any other questions, drop a comment below or join the Telegram. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.